Well today is a special day because today we're having a trip to the seaside. I'm here in Bridlington on the cliff tops for their uh, classic car show. Now um, I'm lucky enough to be here with Claire uh, who's brought this fantastic little camper van but uh, she knows a lot more about them than I do so I'm going to hand you over so tell us what have we got here. Hi, thanks Mark. Um, well, this is Winston. Um, he's our special camper van. He's a 1960 Thames Dormobile, uh, Thames 400E, if you want to be precise. Um, he was actually originally a barn find. He was in a barn for 30 years, untouched. The farmer who originally purchased him uh, used him for 38,000 miles only, put him in the barn, and he was found when the, the farmer passed away. So. The family um, realised it was in such good condition. Um, they found someone, a couple like us, um, who took took him off their hands, and we've basically just cleaned him up. He's completely original, um, still very low mileage. We're only into the early forty thousands, mm. um, and he's in such good condition, really, considering his age, sixty-two years old. Um, he was the model before the Ford Transit. Right. Okay. So Thames being related to Ford. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is Winston, and as you can see, there's also some bunk beds in the roof, which um, the camera might not pick up. But um, you know, he sleeps. We still use him um, occasional overnighters. Right. Okay. Mostly days out. Mm. We come to shows like this. It's a perfect vehicle for such as this. I mean, well, it's perfect for obviously car shows, yeah. um, but obviously for seaside as well, what better vehicle than a, a camper? Yeah, as you can see, a uh, cup of tea made. We've had a bacon and egg butty this morning as you yeah. smelt. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you got five minutes to have it, that is, because this vehicle's attracted a lot of attention this morning. Yeah, actually, it's rare that we haven't got anyone around it. Um, he does. Wherever we go, he just attracts enormous attention because he's so rare. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've really hesitated on whether to renovate him or not, and we've decided not to. He's just, just in such good condition that yeah. we're just going to try and maintain his originality. Yeah. So when you're in that position with an older vehicle and you've got a little few things that need repairing and it's... It's that real dilemma that you always face. You yeah. know, do you start the renovation process? Do you kind of just make do and mend? And, yeah. and we're kind of in that ball game. But he's in such good nick overall. I mean, even the curtains. You see the vibrancy, the colour in the curtains. Yeah. Um, all original 1960, original fire extinguisher, you know. It's all these little bits and pieces. I think are really important. Take the fire extinguishers more for aesthetics than. Uh... Oh yes, I wouldn't want. To, <laughs> I wouldn't rely on it. We have a, we have a proper fire extinguisher. Yeah, always uh, handy to have with an old vehicle, especially one that you're going to be cooking uh, bacon yeah, and eggs in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but overall, now we we love him. He gets a lot of um, a lot of love and attention, and he was actually uh, found in a barn. We've ended up building our own barn to house him. Um, right. So he is. He sleeps in the lap of luxury. It's well looked after then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, we were talking earlier about, obviously, out on the road. Now, it's not the sprightliest of vehicles. You were saying, it's, is it a three-speed? Yeah, he has three gears. Um, and uh, hill starts are a huge issue because the you know everything is um positioned in a very different you know under the column for the um gears and and uh the pedals are so far away right i i actually physically can't drive him my husband can drive him and so i'm i'm a happy customer happy passenger should i say yeah um but three gears yeah if we go on a hill he struggles he's a bit grumpy on hills um generally we have to go up in the first if it's a, if it's a very steep hill yeah some hills we probably wouldn't even attend attempt so yeah. we try and stay away from really steep yeah. inclinations so journeys have to be well planned out maybe especially the longer ones but uh, in terms of you i mean you are obviously still being able to use it um, yes. and another thing i noticed with this vehicle when i so when you pulled up next to me this morning is the size it's quite compact compared to the modern equivalent yeah well the, the reason for that is because the engine is in between the two front seats yeah um, because the engine's right up front, um, unlike all the VWs and um, other vehicles that have engines in the back, yeah. the back's completely open, and that's obviously where the kitchen area is and the wardrobe. Yeah. So it just, it just gives an overall impression of space, and there's a lot of windows, so it's an overall yeah. impression of light and space, really. But it looks like the kind of thing that, even when you're away and you want to nip down to the supermarket for some milk and some bacon, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's not such a big vehicle that it's 
it's you can still park it places the oh, roof drops really? down it, you know you can yes. there's probably not many car parks you can't get in with it oh yeah no, no we've never had any problem with that to be fair um but wherever we go he's um he always um you know attracts the attention of onlookers people remember these vans from when they used to work back in the 60s and the 70s and so they have very fond memories of them and they had their own quirks at the time and uh, so when they see him and he's in fact he's, he's converted into a camper van um you know it attracts a lot of people coming to have a look and remembering really the old days so it's, it's lovely people have got lovely memories of these vans and yeah so it's nice um, to hear them and, and to, you know, bring a smile to their faces. Yeah. Well, it's certainly brought a few smiles this morning anyway. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome, Mark. Now, a car I've not actually seen at a show until today is this uh, Sunbeam Alpine two-door coupe. Um, really striking car. It's in, in a fantastic colour. Um, and we've got this sort of tan vinyl interior as well. Now, I'm told the other car in the range would have been the um, Sunbeam Rapier, which looks similar but uh, was a, a little bit more of a market model. Um, this one uses a 17-1800cc engine uh, that could be found in some other models uh, from the era. But uh, yeah, really classy looking body. I love this sort of glass house at the back as well. Makes the car look um, sort of quite light and bright and, and to be honest, f certainly from the outside, um, it looks like the kind of thing that you could imagine uh, people going on uh, sort of driving holidays touring um, into Europe in back in the day. As with many cars this year we've got um, this really thin rimmed steering wheel here with sunbeam in the middle. Gauges we've got pretty basic actually, there's no rev counter in here, we've got a, a speedometer, a fuel gauge and a temperature gauge and um, oh, and a clock and that's about it. We've got a little uh, two band radio in here as well, lots of, uh, got a bit of wood trim on the dash and this lovely wood top gear lever as well which looks very 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 nice. Now something else I quite like in here as well is we've got frameless doors in this coupe model uh, with these opening quarter lights as well which is quite a nice touch and uh, just sort of lifts the car that little bit makes it that little bit uh, nicer and more desirable. Now one thing I've noticed that is a little uh, different in this car to um, what you normally find is the handbrake. The handbrake is actually positioned uh, down the right hand side of the driver's seat here um, between the seat and the uh, door sill um, rather than in the centre where we've just got, got an extended centre console that runs all the way here to the back. Now you'd be forgiven if you said to me that this was a mini behind me and in a sense it is. Uh, this is actually a Woolsey Hornet, um, basically one of the posher minis. Uh, we've actually got a, a booted mini saloon here uh, but the Woolsey also have things like this fantastic grille, uh, for example, that you wouldn't have got on a regular Mini. Now, this particular example is a 1967, um, and this car is actually featured in some uh, TV, most notably TV um, Yorkshire TV series The Royal and Heartbeat. Um, so this car has been seen uh, in the village of uh, Aidensfield, uh, otherwise known as Goatland. Um, now, I have actually filmed in, uh, in that area myself. I did a... Um, a little trip in the Megan over the moors and out to Whitby and that was one of the places we stopped off so if you haven't checked that out already uh, you may wish to take a look. Now regular viewers will be aware I'm uh, not that hot when it comes to pre-war cars uh, but someone who's got one touch car here is Steve. Yeah, uh, uh, it's an SS Jaguar 1.5 built by Sir William Lyons. It's uh, 1936, one of the smallest Jaguars ever made. Right. Um, built on a Triumph chassis, which is what they did in them days. It's an oak frame body on it. Yeah. Which is not oak frame, ash frame body. Get right, OK. <laughs> Um, it's folded over with metal. So I suppose that was common practice in them That's days to take a chassis and a lot of it would have been like the old um, horse carriage coach builders, wouldn't it? Would have built yep. bodies for cars. Same thing. It, it, um, it's like coach built. It's how they didn't made yeah. things like awesome carriages sort of thing, you know. Yeah. And it was the same technology because that suppose people that's the only skill they had yeah and now we were talking off camera obviously we're saying a lot of classic car purchases are fuel, fueled by nostalgia um, but there's getting less and less people around who who have maybe got a history with these sort of cars what what brought you to this one um, i just wanted an older car I've, i'm a car mechanic myself worked on i've worked on ferraris lamborghinis all sorts of stuff Jack, my main passion were jaguars right okay and it um I just fancied an older one because I've worked on all the rest yeah. all my life, you know, and it, uh, 
you can fix this if it breaks down. Yeah. But it, if you've got a few spares with you, you can mend it at side at road. Yeah, of Most course. Modern cars, you can't do that anymore. No. You know, so no. It's just. It's it, it just an interest, you know. It didn't need much doing to it. Yeah. It belonged to a, a doctor in Wales. Right. Before me, so he, he'd looked after it. So in terms of living with these cars, and I know uh, one pre-war car owner I spoke to with an Austin 7 said you've really got to sort of think about your journeys and obviously said it'll, it'll cruise at 40 on the flat. Yeah. Um, now I imagine this this is probably a little bit uh, better at keeping up with modern traffic. Not not very much. Not very much. It gets on hills, it struggles, but it's only a one and a half litre. Yeah, so it's probably quite small for a car of this, for a Jaguar anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, there are other models like this, and the like two and a half litres, three and a half litres. Okay. That might be my next one. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I imagine prices for those are uh, probably well, quite steep, are they? The similar sort of prices, it depends on condition. Yeah. But, um, this, it, you to think, like I say, you have to think about where you're going, plan your journeys. Yeah. Uh, you can't go hurtling round corners and no. accelerating away. You just got to, it's like stepping back in time, you know. And yeah. And what's the transmission on these? Is it a manual or automatic? It's manual. Four speed manual. Four speed, yeah. yeah. There's only synchro on third and fourth. Right, okay. A um, little bit on second, but it's not, to be really careful, but it's just its age a lot. Yeah. Of it. But if, obviously, if you're double clutching and rev matching on your downshifts, other than that, is it quite an easy car to drive? Steering's really heavy. Yeah. You get out of my modern cars and get into this, you have to really, you, you have to think about it because you can't turn steering wheel. Yeah. You, you've got to be moving a little bit, you know, and it, it's so heavy. Yeah. It, um, it, it may need a bit of work doing on it, but we've got to a point where it, it's, it's usable. Yeah. You know, so it, um, Which is better usable and obviously being brought to events like this than being yeah, sat in a garage. It don't come out in winter. They're no. Just try and look after it, you know, and keep it out as it is. Yeah. Because it's like 80 odd year old now. Yeah, it's uh, time flies, doesn't it? Yeah. So what does this car get used mostly for? Is it shows or do you have? Is it, does it come out on a Sunday normally or? I'll come out to shows sometimes out with my family, mm. but it. it um, I've done weddings with it, a couple of weddings. Mm. But this is just for friends. Don't do it. It's not my business. I don't like that. No. Just, no. Just, people just like getting something different, you know, and yeah. just enjoy it. Yeah. Well, it's brilliant seeing you here today, and uh, thanks for showing me around and uh, having a chat with me about it. Right. No problem at all. Thank you. Well, I'm feeling rather saintly having just shoe-owned myself into this uh, rather marvellous-looking Volvo uh, P1800S. Now, I'm told that the S signifies that this is actually a later car. Um, the later cars was actually taken back in house and built by Volvo in Sweden. Now, earlier cars um, were built by Jensen, but by all accounts, Volvo weren't happy with the build quality, um, so hence they took it back in house themselves. Um, now, in many respects, this feels very, very un-Volvo. It's uh, a very sleek, sporty-looking body style. Um, lovely once you're in here, but I must admit, uh, I really struggled getting my legs under this steering wheel here. Got a thin-rimmed, uh, two-spoke steering wheel. Um, this lovely dashboard actually rem reminds me of maybe something like an old Mercedes. You've got this sort of um, metal... Um, facing here around the uh, dash with this sort of uh, red um, not sure that's vinyl or leather um, but trimming that one out and all these gauges have got these sort of chrome um, these chrome uh, tunnels here with all these gauges in looks absolutely marvellous um, this lovely red interior with this red carpet in here it's a really short stubby little gear lever um, yeah this is a really really nice place to be uh, obviously windscreen cuts back here but has a, a nice curve to it as it wraps around this little mirror on top of the dashboard there um, yeah visibility out is actually pretty good for the type of car um, lovely little quarter lights here as well um, yeah this is wonderful uh, now we have got a couple of seats in the back, I wouldn't say there's a lot of room there, we've also got a little bit of a shelf area in the back as well, just to add a little bit of extra luggage capacity. Now I did mention uh, feeling rather saintly having got in this car, and yep, some of you may have guessed it, these, these cars did actually feature um, in the Saint with Roger Moore back in the day as well. Now I couldn't walk past this car without stopping to talk about it uh, because this is a Mark II Ford Capri. Now Mark IIs are some of the rarest around, you just do not see these cars. Um, but also because my dad had a Mark II Capri on an S registration like this one 
in yellow, just like this one, and with a 1.6 litre engine, much like this one. Um, a few subtle differences, my dad's was an S where um, this is not, and this one's also got an automatic transmission. Um, but this car's also for sale. If you are interested in, uh, in a, having a Capri like this yourself, uh, I'm told this one will be on Facebook Marketplace, so by all means have a look on there, and uh, yeah, could land yourself a nice Ford Capri. Trevor here has got a lovely Mark 1 Granada estate. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about this. This is a GL spec, I believe. It's a GL. It's a 3-litre V6 with the Essex engine in it, uh, which I've owned for four years. And it was originally owned by the original owner, Ray Barber, who owned it from brand new until he died. Hmm. And uh, he used it every day for 20 years as a runabout. And uh, then after that, he took it off the road restored it over two years and then take, used to take it to shows on a trailer behind the Mark 1 saloon. All right. And, uh, but yeah, everything, everything has been nut and bolt. It was ripped right back to everything. Like, you know, it's fantastic. Yeah. And he died. And when he died, he had 27 cars, seven of them being Granadas in one form or another. All right. And uh, one man bought the old lot and consequently sold them. And and the estate hung about for a bit. Okay. The saloons made good money and they go quicker first. Really? Everybody wants a saloon. And, uh, and the uh, coupes, he had two coupes and one just sold on eBay for the last, in the last six weeks, made £30,000. <laughs> yeah, the Mark 1 coupes are a very rare car, aren't they? Very rare car, yeah. It's, it's like the estates, nobody really wants these big estate cars, but mm. I'm into big, I love big cars. Yeah. See, I would have thought on rarity alone that these would have been actually quite sought after. Yeah, very. Well, you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? But he, when he first put it on the market, he wanted about 25000 which was a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, I kept pestering him, you know, with a, an offer now and again. And in the end, he said, gave in and said, OK, take it. <laughs> so uh, I think I got a good buy. Yeah. But now I've got an agreed valuation of 30000 with the insurance on the buy. You know. Yeah. So you've still got to find somebody who wants to buy it if you want to sell. Not that it's for sale. Really. No. No. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Old Fords do fetch good money though, don't they? There's something about Fords, a car that were relatively inexpensive when they were new. Um, but I think there's that nostalgia people relate to them, don't they? Yeah. Well, everything you, you can work on a Ford, you can look under the bonnet here, and everything that's under there you can do yourself if you've got half a brain. Yeah. But now you've got to wait for a light to come on under the bonnet, on the dashboard, and tell you what it wants. But yeah. No, and hope Ford. the computer doesn't reset when you, by the time you plug it in. That's it, you've got it right. Yeah. yeah. They're so frustrating new cars, really. But I like it so you can do a bit yourself if you want to, tinker about. But I get more enjoyment out just looking at it, talking about it, and polishing it. Yeah. That's my enjoyment. And driving, of course, like me. So these days, then, is it more of a show car or does it actually get used as an estate car? It does get used as an estate car. I have a removal company and uh, we often use it for little bits of furniture and boxes, you know. Yeah. Not every day, obviously, but we don't hide them away. No. I've got a Mark III Cortina as well, um, but that's a 74. Mm. Um, but, but that is a show car. But it's the, the estate car, this is the best one to drive. You know, it's so comfy, power steering, mm. just gets on and does the job like you know. And where does the GL specification fit in the range? Um, well, it's mid-range actually. The basic was the console, right. which was the basic spec, you know, you've got the plastic seats and all this. The GL was the middle of the range and then the gear, but they never made many Granada gear mount ones okay. in gear form, mostly GLs and uh, consoles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know what it is with them, but a lot of people just don't like big cars. No. I think it's the garage as well. You need a big garage to put them in, so that, you know. Mm. In the 70s, big garages weren't about really, because everybody just come off the Anglias and Morris Miners and things like that. Well, know. incidentally, the big garages are about now. Either, yeah. Have you seen in these modern houses? I think I think the garages on these modern houses are actually designed for an Anglia. Yeah, they're not very big, are they? Yeah, you a bit like in, the park, car park spaces. You can get in the garage with your car, but you can't get out. Can't get out of it. <laughs> Unless you've got to stay, you come out the back. No, obviously, well, yeah, I suppose that would be one advantage over the saloon. You can climb out the back. Climb out the back door. <laughs> but we have a say, we have a removal. This lives in the warehouse with the lorries. We bury them away, like, so nobody can get to them. Yeah. 
it's the best thing to do in life. Yeah. yeah. But owning it's a joy to own, absolute joy to own. People like you want to talk about it, and that fills me. Yeah. Fills me. Yeah. yeah. Now you mentioned uh, off camera as well. Um, this car's been in the magazine recently. Yeah, it's just been in the classic Ford magazine. Um, I did a show near Selby, and the guy asked me if I would be interested in putting it in, in a classic Ford magazine. And we did a photo shoot on Grimsby Docks of all places. Right. And uh, it took 520 pictures of the car. Yeah. They're about three and a half hours. Yeah. By the time it finished, I nearly wanted to slip the throat. <laughs> you can only take so many pictures of the car. Yeah. But uh, it was enjoyable, and uh, it's a article in the magazine. Yeah, which month issue was that, do you remember? That was uh, August issue of Classic so, Ford. So, August 2020, 22 issue of Classic Ford magazine. Yeah. So, anyone that wants to see, uh, to have a look through that, maybe you can get a get a back issue ordered or something. Yeah, they're yeah. all there to be found, like, yeah, I've got, I've got my copy in the car, I always keep it if anybody wants to have a look. So, anyone who wants to check that out, this is the, uh, the issue that you're looking for. Um, so, yeah, maybe get a copy of that one and uh, have a look at this fantastic Ford Granada. Yeah, and in the, the practical, the practical uh, classic magazine, they've got a feature of the Grenadas. It's 50 years this month since they came out. Well, 50 I mean. years ago this month, so uh, yeah. an interesting reading through into the Grenadas. That's crazy to think, isn't it? Half a century of Grenadas. Yeah. I can't believe it. Our technology's moved on as well, you know, but yeah. sometimes not for the best, I don't think. No, I'd agree with you on that yeah. one. Right, well, thank, thank you, you very much. It's been marvellous. You're very welcome. Thank you. Our regular channel viewers know that I've got a bit of a thing for French cars, uh, predominantly Renaults, but I did get to drive a uh, Peugeot 205 earlier this year. Um, I will leave a, possibly leave a link to that video um, at the end of this one. Uh, now, Kevy is lucky enough to have a uh, 205, but this is a 1.9 GTI. Yeah, I bought it about three and a half years ago, I saw it on eBay close to me. Always been looking, but most nights on eBay, just to sit still. So it came across close, and uh, the kid needed shut of it because the missus was giving him grief. So I managed to get it for a good price. It uh, had a slight water leak, which I told my partner at the time was probably just an O-ring. Ended up being the head gasket, so a £1,000 letter, and the car was on the road. That's marvellous. Then, uh, yeah, these things are obviously quite sought after these days, but uh, I say you dropped quite lucky, really, because... Uh, you you're saying you were getting a bit of grief, you, you could have ended up and it might have been the missus he wanted rid of. Yeah, maybe, yeah. The house was quite big, so I could have done the sofa if I wanted. But, uh, but no, yeah. it worked out well and you got you actually got the car instead, so that's good. Yeah, like I said, I put a thousand pounds into the egg gasket and got all that all, that all done. And then ran it for a year, and then the year after that it needed a rear beam. Yeah. That was a source, I had to source that. Uh, got managed to, my friend gave me a hand in his workshop for that, so I managed to do that. Every year something he's doing on it. I mean, it's going for his MOT this time, but next year it's going to need some welding, I think. So yeah. That all adds up. But they're completely worth it, aren't they? I mean, obviously, the one I reviewed was only um, a 1.1 Mardi Gras, but you know what? That was probably one of the most enjoyable, fun cars I've driven in quite a long time. So I imagine these, especially being the 1.9 as well, it, 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 it must just put a smile on your face every time you drive it. Yeah, what I like about it is I've also got a, a Golf R, and that'll cruise on 100 mile an hour all day long, you don't feel like you're doing anything. If you do a 50 in this, it feels like you're doing 120. Yeah. So you, you don't get no speeding tickets, which is good. Yeah. And, uh, no ABS, no power steering, no decent traction control, no nothing really. So it's just really you on the road, which is good. Yeah. So. It's, it's nice when you have cars that, like you say, you can feel like you're on a rally stage without actually going like a bow of hell. Yeah, that's the one thing I really do like about I think last time I used it. They were just on a dual carriage up to 70, and Mrs. is screaming, telling me to slow down. I said, was I doing 70? She said, the speed must be broken. But it's just the case, it's just, there's no sound, soundproofing, no nothing. So it's, yeah. it's a little bit narrow. So I think the shims need doing spanish, that's never expense. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's really good for this driver. These cars of this era, though, especially like little French hatchbacks, they were always known for being a bit sort of tinny and a bit... It was sort of the fault, the decade that followed where the quality started to get up to a little bit. But like you say, when, when the cars like this, I mean, what's it, about 800 kilos, give or take? They, yeah. don't, they don't weigh nothing, do they? And yeah. I think that's the trade-off. You can, you can live with the sacrifices for, for what you get in return. Yeah, like I said, it's uh, 130 brake horsepower. It's probably lost a few in the last 30 years. But it don't weigh much. You can literally just push it about. Like, yeah. I'm in the garage during lockdown, I was training in the garage, so I just pushed the car out and pushed back in again. Yeah. It literally weighed nothing, so that was that was quite good, pushing it around the garden and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been really enjoyable, like I said, I've had it. Semi-19, I got it just for COVID, which was good, so there's no COVID taps on it. Because right. after that, everything just shot up. Yes, yeah. So, Everyone wanted a project, didn't they? Yeah. And a dog. 
So yeah, well, the dogs are back there somewhere. So, uh, so yeah, it's been it's been enjoyable. Like I said, I've had it. Uh, it's my brother's garage at the moment. It's got an oil leak. I took it to a garage and they said I'd start worrying if it, if it doesn't leak. It's all old classics leak. They said put a bit of cardboard underneath before you spend hundreds of pounds chasing around just trying to find out what the leak is. Yeah, so, I have a friend with an old Alpha, and I remember um, he pulled up in this old Alpha, and somebody was saying it's uh, I can't see any leaks. It must be empty. Yeah, like I said, I think I've got a gearbox. I only change, I think. I don't know why I'm on the diff, but I'm looking after I've got some friends who are into it, so if I just text them, I'll bring them, send them the video. Yeah. So, yeah, bring it round. Like, my friend's got a garage, so we have up on the ramp quite a lot to have a look underneath. That's quite handy with classic cars, having a friend with a garage. Yeah, so yeah. I'm always bugging them, which is, which is good. Yeah. So, like I said, we bring it to as many car shows as we can. But it's sitting on the back just chilling, which is quite good. Yeah. Well, obviously, it's the car that saved Peugeot, and it's it's great that all these, sort of a good three decades on now, these cars are still, um, you know, getting a lot of love. Yeah, like I said, it's, uh, a lot of people, like, when I pack it up, they come across and they always say, this is where, uh, this is what I used to have when I was younger, or this is the car like, when I was, when I was with younger. I had one in 2004, and I ended up selling it for £1,000 in the wind and the rain and the dark. I thought I'd rip the kid off. Mm. So I'm yeah, paying a lot more for that. Yeah. Later. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been really, really good. Well, that's wonderful. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Cheers. Traditionally, Mercedes only made the larger, more expensive models, uh, but they realise, as many other manufacturers have done since, that there's money to be made on using a little bit of prestige and uh, that, that brand name, uh, but on a smaller car. Now, it could be a car to get your regular buyers out, um, maybe people who've retired or had company cars, and get them into something a little bit smaller, maybe a little cheaper. Um, it's also a way of attracting new people to the brand. So we start here with Mercedes 190E, which was the uh, sort of first of the more affordable Mercedes and these were very very popular in fact in uh, some countries you'll still see these running around as taxis uh, you know these were seriously uh, durable cars and uh, obviously people love them and still do uh, following on from that, 995 Mercedes W202 C-Class, um, quite an early one this, this is a 1.8 automatic as well, um, but again getting a rare sight now these early C-Class and uh, yeah, really nice looking car and these were sort of just at the point before the quality started to drop off, as we know early 2000s Mercedes had some issues with uh, slightly ropey build quality but yeah, both of these cars are sort of just before that point so make a great, uh, a great use buy and and probably quite a good um, entry into classic car ownership as well. So Andy's got this lovely Austin Cambridge Countryman here. It's a car I don't know a great deal about, but it certainly caught my eye because this is the kind of uh, sort of estate car that would have been a typical sort of family transport back in its day. So I'd like to learn a bit more about it. So what can you tell me about this car? Uh, it's 1968 Austin Countryman uh, estate car. Uh, it's Sierra Beige over Rose Top. Uh, genuine 48,000 miles. Wow. And uh, I've only owned it for two weeks. I've got it from the Cambridge and Oxford Owners Club via a, a lad called Steve Turner, who's our secretary. And uh, it's a lovely car. Is this the first of these that you've owned, or have you had any more? No, I've had quite a few of these. I've had uh, the Morris Oxford. I've also got a 1960 Riley, what I'm restoring. Right. Which is the posh one. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I love this one. I got the impression you knew quite a bit for a man of uh, two weeks' ownership, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I said, I'd seen that it was coming up for sale by Steve and mm. went down and seen it straight away, yeah, I wanted it. Mm. But I just love the shape of them, love everything about them. It's well, we've, we've obviously discussed the saloon variants, of which there's one just over there in front of us, but uh, obviously this being an estate as well, something a little bit different, isn't it? It is. You can actually convert it to make it into a bed, as long as you're under six foot. Right, if you're okay. over six foot, you'll have to have the tailgate down and your feet stuck out of the back. <laughs> right, okay then. But, uh, I yeah. don't know everything else about it. It's just, just as I bought it, really. Yeah, and what, what is it about these cars that, that uh, floats you about? What attracts you to them? simplicity, looks of them, they're just something different. They've got 
families we used to have one before so yeah I think part of it's a nostalgia trip yeah I mean nostalgia does fuel a lot of classic car purchases doesn't it but I think going back to you were saying about the style of it and the look of it that you can see a lot of that American styling influence around this windscreen around the fins at the back I love this uh, sun visor on top as well that's a really nice touch uh, I think that's an extra what's been put on it wasn't produced with the uh, visor on that's more of a 50s thing yeah I like it, it yeah it, it, I think, think it attracts it to itself yeah and like I said there's a, a nice saloon over there yeah and, uh, another Oxford at the top there was popular cars in the day mm. like lots and lots of people had them yeah unfortunately a lot of people ended up uh, banger racing with them uh, like a lot of large older cars yeah because they were solid steel, you'd see a lot on the banger tracks with the lads like smashing them into pieces. Yeah. Which is a shame. But so what have we got under the bonnet then in this one? It's just a 1622 uh, B-series engine. The same engine what's in the MGB GT. Yeah. And the originals ones were 1500 and then they changed. Hence the early ones were called us in Cambridge 55s. Okay. So it means 55 brake horsepower. Okay. A60 now, 60 brake horsepower. Right, okay. And how do you find it sort of in daily use? Is it, um, is it the kind of car that keeps up with traffic well? Yeah, keeps up with modern traffic, cruises along 60, 65, no problem at all. Mm. Uh, good on fuel for a big car, 25 to 30, depending on how you, tr how you drive it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, nice and simple. Yeah. Simple to work on. Two basic things, if there's no spark, it's fuel. If there's no fuel, it's a spark. That's it. Yeah. No electronics, no gizmos, no nothing. No. As my, grand, uh, my grandson said, Grandad wears a switch to press the windows, and I said, you don't, you wind them down. You wind the wind handle. Down. <laughs> He's now fascinated that it goes up and down with an handle. Yeah. He is only five, though. <laughs> yeah, novelty might wear off soon, it but uh, but no, it's wonderful. It's uh, it, it's great to see that uh, even a younger generation is showing a bit of interest, so, so that's you. excellent. Well, thanks very much. Thank you, Matt. Cheers.
Now the uh, Dormobile's not the only uh, sort of camper we've got here today. We've got this lovely little caravan which is perfect for this seaside setting we're in. Uh, now this is owned by Bob here. Yeah, yeah no, my name's Bob Brown and uh, this is a 1953 teardrop caravan, an original one. Not in this condition when I bought it. When I bought it, it was a, had to be restored quite a bit, actually. Yeah. But I've, it took me a year to do it, but right. I managed to get it done in time, you know. Yeah. And then, mid all new units, everything else was sourced from the charity shops. Yeah? Yeah. It looks marvellous and everything looks sort of period yeah. correct. It's, it's uh, original cooker with it and that was it I'll say all the windows are original as well yeah yeah so what brought you to um, to, to purchase this in the first place well I'm into classic cars I've, I've got four other cars and uh, I bought a Morris Manor the one that I tore this with and I saw this on eBay and I thought oh that'd be nice to go behind the Morris yeah it looks so, a treat doesn't it behind it yeah so I thought right I'll buy that so I bought it restored it and I tore it with the Morris all the time now yeah so of all these sort of period items you've got in here, what's your favourite then? Well, all the things in here. I, I like me, I like me bowl of fruit. <laughs> I must say that fruit bowl did catch me eye. I think maybe it's sort of nostalgia. I'm sure I remember a family member having a fruit bowl just like that one yeah. or something similar. Yeah. yeah, I always had a fruit bowl when I went to my granny's. She always had fresh fruit on the table. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but no, it's wonderful. So you, like I say on a day like today, you can stand at the back here and and do your cooking and yeah. what have you, and then uh, just about enough space to to sleep and get out at Elements. That's it. Yeah, you you, know, you, you put the kettle on, you do yourself sandwich as well. You can do an egg, bit bacon, whatever you want to do. Yeah, you know, it's all there. So bacon and egg seems to be the uh, food of choice this morning. It does, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's what they were having down in that uh, Dormobile earlier on. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. That's what everybody does. And then, as I say, on the inside, we uh, remove the cushions to make what we call like a, a, a sofa. Yeah. And uh, that's where, you, if it's a bit cloudy, you sit inside on the sofa. Yeah. So you're not yeah. out in the elements. So have you added any, been tempted to add any mod cons in there, or is it? No, you... no, I've kept it totally as original as it yeah. should be. There's no lighting, right? Nothing else. No hidden USB power ports no, or anything like no, that. Then there's nothing. No, there's nothing like that. And the toilet is a bucket in the back of the Morris. Right. <laughs> Well, if it, if it serves a purpose, if it does... It, it does what we want to do, and that's it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You, if, when you go to a site, you go to a site that's got toilets and showers on. Yeah, it's, it's just somewhere to sleep, and it's easier than pitching a tent, yeah. I suppose. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. marvellous. Yeah. Right, well, I think we need to have a look at this Morris Minor as well. OK, then. So we've got this wonderful tow car. Uh, it must be an early one as well, and it's a, a split screen. So tell us all about it's this, Bob. It's a 1955 split screen Morris Minor. I actually bought this one in... Uh, Clacton on sea. The chap had advertised it on eBay and he was having two new knees fitted and a new hip, so he couldn't do it. So I rung him up and I got the car. I paid £800 for the car. Right. And uh, brought it home. Quite a bit of work to do. I wanted new floors, some bit of new chassis work doing on it. And I changed the engine to a 1098 so I could tow my caravan better. I was going to ask about that because I mean, what engine? Some of the engines in these were quite small, weren't they? Yeah, th this was the the uh, 850 engine. 850. Yeah, so I changed it to 1098 and also changed the differential yeah. in the back axle so that it's uh, it tows the caravan nice and easy. Any hills and it just goes up the hills in no trouble at yeah. all. Now, for any of our younger viewers, obviously the minor was a, a Sir Alec Isagonis creation, weren't it? Like the Mini, yeah. uh, and just like the Mini, he got his um, independent suspension. What he didn't get was his transverse engine and front wheel drive. That's it. Yeah. Is yeah. it still? Is it the A series though that's in yes. these? Or yes, yeah, I weren't sure series, if it yeah. predated that or not. No, 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 it's still the A series engine in this one. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it's got enough to. I mean, it's not the biggest of caravans, is it? Is it? No. Cope okay. The, the caravan is so light. Me, I have a granddaughter. She's seven years old, and she pulled it out of the garage yesterday by herself. Right. So it's so light. So yeah. that you don't know it's on the back of the car. Well, I must admit, my daughter's seven, and I imagine she it'd probably be a favourite playhouse with that. Given oh, that, the... my two grandchildren love it. Yeah. Can we have the caravan out, Granddad? We, you know, we need to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll come and see you, but only if you bring the caravan out. Oh yeah, that's it. that's always <laughs> the case, you know. 
Can we do it? Yeah. Can we have our breakfast in the caravan, Grandad? Yeah. <laughs> and you say you've got other cars as well. I mean, do, yes. Does this one get its fair share of use? Then is yeah. this a favourite? I, what I do, I, I have five cars in total. And I don't like to rotate the cars. Right. And what I do, I, I'll take one to one show. I'll take one to another show. So they're all getting used. I don't like cars to be sat. Doesn't do them any good, good, does it? Do them no good at all. No. No. So I, I take them out individual. Yeah. Well, I think you've picked on a day like today and at this venue, you've picked the right vehicle. For this, so, for this with the caravan, it's absolutely fabulous. Yeah. It's had lots and lots of attention as the caravan. Yeah, the, the Dormobile earlier on was the same. They couldn't yeah. even get breakfast with that many people yeah. uh, coming around. So, uh, you never know, come, come the end of the day when we all go home, you might be tempted to stay. Oh, we could stay, yeah. We can just stop here for the night, yeah. Yeah, marvellous. It's a nice view looking out there. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a wonderful view today. Yeah. Such a clear day as well. It's Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. That's it. All right. Well, thank you very much. I've, I've really enjoyed looking at that. And clearly, uh, as you can see, with the crowd behind us, so are a lot of other people. Yeah. OK, thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. Thank you. Well, I think that just about uh, wraps us up. I don't think we're going to end on much more of a high than that. So uh, thank you for, uh, for watching. Um, of course, check out some of the other videos. I'm going to put links to some other classic car shows. Uh, and one to some of the cars as well I think that 205 that I mentioned earlier we'll put that link in there as well um, obviously there's a lot more videos still to come along I've still got a new car reveal to do as well um, we're also uh, gate closing in on that 500 subscriber target as well uh, having recently uh, had a bit of a surge after Festival of the Unexceptional last week. Uh, so if you haven't done so already, please do hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification as well. That way when I release uh, a new video, a show report or anything else, um, you'll get notified and uh, you'll be one of the first to see. Until next time, it is goodbye from me and it is goodbye from Bob. Bob. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. That's not the part, right? To just a, a random Some visitor. Just turned up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife will be thinking, who next? That, <laughs> oh, you'll be in bamboo. <laughs> oh, I won't be in bamboo. <laughs> right, okay. ask how on earth do you manage to get in and out because I really struggled. The, yeah, there must be a knack to it because I, I couldn't get my um, cell phone.